Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about uh, the comments I've been getting recently over the last ooh, two or three months in regards to product endorsements. One of them, the most important thing is sunscreens and I've got lots on Instagram and actually all the comments below uh, in regards to why do I like um, things like La Roche Posay and why do I actually endorse but i don't endorse i actually this is actually just a product review and what i like to use so there's no right there's no wrong it's just what i like to use so today's video what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually give you five important facts on choosing a sunscreen and how to make an informed decision the first thing you've got to understand is the spf what does an spf mean spf is only it's only a measure of the burn time if it, a sunscreen has an spf factor of two means that 50% of the UVB rays, so the UVB rays, remember the ones that give you sunburn, get attenuated. So which means they're burning in 10 minutes, you burn in 20 minutes. If you have an SPF factor of 15, that increases to 93% protection rate. An SPF 30, that increases to 97. And an SPF of 50 will give you only 98% um, attenuation. I wouldn't say only, it's pretty good because you only have 2% of UVB rays going in. But what I'm trying to get at is that by jumping from a 30 to a 50, you're not actually getting double. You're only getting 1% more of the UVB rays that are not entering your skin. So remember, when you look at a sunscreen, you've got to know the ingredients. So it's not just UVB that counts, it's UVA. UVA is the one that gives you Skin aging, so that's when it breaks down your collagen, your elastin, and it breaks down your hyaluronic acid, your aminoglycans, and all the good stuff that provides structure, support, decreases wrinkles, and solar damage in your skin. So you're looking for a high factor UVA. The second thing is rather controversial, is physical or chemical. A lot of comments I've had, like I said, both on Instagram and on this channel, is that why do I endorse or why do I like chemical sunscreens? The answer is that I don't. It's just what I like on my face. There's a reason why is because with this particular sunscreen, right, because it comes in a cosmetically elegant um, formulation, it blends into my skin really easily. And hence, that's it. It just goes into my face, which means I'm gonna use this sunscreen a lot more compared to a cosmetically inelegant sunscreen that say something with uh, particles of zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, which are chemical sunscreens. So what's the difference between the physical sunscreen and the chemical sunscreen? So one can see in this video the actual difference. So you can see this lady now, she's putting on what's known as a chemical sunscreen. The chemical sunscreen has got to be absorbed. So the disadvantages of chemical sunscreen, number one, it can cause an allergic reaction. So certainly things like benzoate, benzoates, avobenzone, cinnamates, uh, all the old fashioned salicylates, they can all cause allergic reactions. They can be more sensitive to your skin. It takes 20 minutes before it gets absorbed. And you can see how it actually works. It works by actually absorbing UVB rays and then using those UVB rays, it transforms that into heat, heat into free radicals, free radicals, which are bad for your skin, get scattered into your epidermis um, and don't hit the dermis. So that's how uh, chemical blockers work. Now, what do physical blockers do? So physical blockers work in a totally different way. So let's have a look at what physical blockers do. Physical blockers actually sit on top of your skin. They contain particles of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. In the old fashioned days, when I say old fashioned, I think about a decade ago, titanium dioxide used to be non-coded. So titanium dioxide was still susceptible to UVB breakdown to cause free radicals. So what did they do? They actually put aluminium and silica around each molecule of titanium dioxide. And they actually shrink that molecule down from 100 nanometers down to about 25. When you do that, you make the um, formulation more cosmetically elegant, which means people are actually gonna use it. But still for my skin type, like being ethnic, um, I still get that sheen. So that's why I'm not too keen on really good sunscreens like this for me. So that's just my skin. But if you're fair, um, then certainly um, things like invisible zinc, um, even um, normal stuff like uh, uh, Neutrogena, they are all cosmetically elegant sunscreen. Okay, so that's the second thing to consider is 
what type of sunscreen do you want, a physical one or chemical? You can see that um, in, in the videos that the physical sunscreen actually reflects light. The third thing we, we already discussed, it's got to be cosmetically elegant. If it's cosmetically elegant, you're going to use it. You can have the best sunscreen you have, SPF 100, you know, high UVA protection, but if you don't like to use it, it's not going to be good. Okay, so you've got to be cosmetically elegant. The fourth thing is the amount. Most people don't realize you need five grams. Five grams to cover, it's five grams is actually a teaspoon, and that will cover your face, it'll cover your ears, and your neck as well. It's extremely important. If you're using a chemical sunscreen, yes, you do have to wait 20 minutes. If you're using a physical sunscreen, that's not a problem because remember, it sits on top of your skin. Now, the fifth thing is the frequency. Most people don't realize that um, you've got to wear sunscreen at least twice a day. Once in the morning before going out because you're going to get that UV and free radical um, damage. And because throughout the day, when you touch your skin, sweating, uh, wear and tear, uh, your sunscreen is going to wash off. So you need to actually wear it um, during around midday. Reason being is that sunscreen to remember the measure of measurement of the sunscreen they measure it in australia and the us using the uvb index so remember uvb is only a measurement of the burn time and not the actual cellular damage to the uv uh, a rays and if you're sitting in an office behind a glass sure you get attenuation of uvb but all the uva and visible light comes in so that's why you actually have to apply sunscreen twice a day and remember it's five grams and that's quite a lot, it's a teaspoon. Okay guys, so those are my five hints and tips in regards to um, sunscreen use. Now, just to clarify things from here, moving on in the future, I'm by no means, by no means at all endorsed by any product company, right? So no one pays me to actually talk about their particular sunscreens. I'm not on the payroll for La Roche Posay or um, Megan Gale Invisible Zinc. Zilch. Okay, if there's a conflict of interest, I will tell you so. Um, this channel is meant to be a review channel. It's not meant to be a, hey, I endorse this product channel. I will say what products I would like and what I think of those products. There's no right, there's no wrong. Remember, skin is, in, is as individualized as you are. That is the whole essence of this channel. I'm trying to teach you skincare based upon, not based upon marketing, but based upon science and your informed decisions. So I hope you liked this video. I hope that clarifies a lot of things. Um, and um, yeah, and from now on, I hope I don't have those comments as, hey, are you against this or are you working for this company? Because I'm not. Once again, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please share, uh, like, comment and by all means please subscribe i'll see you same time same place uh next week thanks for watching guys bye